uprising in Iran, at least 83 killed and over 1,200 arrested. Since the death of 22-year-old Iranian woman Masajina Amini at the hands of the morality police on September 16th, widespread protests have continued throughout Iran despite internet shutdown. Tehran legislator Mahmoud uh, Nabav Nabavian called the demonstrations riots and stated that the women that take off the mandatory headscarves as an act of civil disobedience are out to prostitute themselves. As of September 29th, according to the Iran Human Rights uh, Non-Governmental Organization, or NGO, 83 deaths have been confirmed throughout 16 provinces. More than 1,000 protesters have been arrested, and many have been subjected to torture and forced confessions on state-affiliated telegram channels. 20-year-old Hadis Najafi was shot in the abdomen, neck, heart, and hand by the security forces on September 21st. Najafi died four days later. On the same day, 16-year-old Mehdi Musavi died in the street after being shot five times and beaten with batons. His family said they were warned to stay quiet or else other family members might quote unquote disappear. Many journalists were also arrested, including uh, Allahe Mohad uh, who, no, I, Mohammadi, who reported on the funeral of Masa Amini. The protests have turned decidedly anti-regime as women continue to burn hijabs and publicly cut their hair. Slogans such as death to the dictator and death to Khamenei are shouted in the streets and from windows and rooftops. Iran Foreign Minister Amir uh, Hussein Abdulian uh, said in an interview with New York City's Morning Edition, quote, there is not a big deal going on in Iran. There is no regime change in Iran. He claims that outside elements have encouraged people to turn violent through satellite channels and websites. So one thing I wanted to just say right off the bat is that the number of 83 killed and over 1,200 arrested was of September 29th. And that was only who could be confirmed based on the work of the Iran Human Rights NGO and them looking at... Um, death certificates and stuff. And that even that work is extremely constricted because of the internet shutdowns. And so even at that point, it was likely that the death count is much, much larger. The largest number that I have seen coming from state affiliated media was that 35 people have died. But this NGO is quantifying a lot more. And then what we really, one thing that really needs to be highlighted was, so that was on the 29th, okay, that we had that number. On the 30th of September, state security forces committed a massacre against people in Baluchistan, which wasn't even calculated as part of this number of 83 people killed. And we can get into what happened in Baluchistan, but... One number I saw was that there were as many as 56 killed in a single day and 270 injured. And by now, probably a lot more have died from their injuries. Um, and it's absolutely horrific what happened. So there was a city, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Is it Zahedan? Yes, Zahedan. Yeah, Zahedan in the Baluchistan province of Iran. And... There, not only were there protests kind of alongside the general protests that have happening been happening since the death of Masa Amini and she was killed for improper job by the morality police, but in that province or in that city, there has been outrage because a police commander of the city, um, RAPE'd, I'm not using the word, the R word because of you two, a police commander R worded a 14 or 15 year old Baluch girl. And there has been outrage in the city because of that. And so what happened was after Friday prayers happened in the city, a lot of people went to the um, police station or numerous police stations to protest. 
And at that point, there are reports that the police opened fire, live ammunition on the people outside, on the citizens from inside the police station. And they think that this was a coordinated attack because based on reports that I read, they think they said this must be planned in advance because within 10 minutes, a helicopter was there and they were shooting at us from a helicopter. Which is just like, I don't even have words for the level of like barbarity entailed in that. Just like shooting at citizens from a helicopter from the sky. It's horrific. Um, so yeah, just a full blown massacre in Baluchistan on Friday that isn't really getting a lot of coverage because of everything that's going on or the combination of things. And so, yes, this death count just got exponentially higher. Yeah. I'm surprised this is not getting more coverage in Iran. We've, we had like a Syria, like, um, what happened in Libya that made the West and all the countries come down on Libya. Like we have a moment where they're shooting people from the sky from a helicopter, right? This is usually the time where it escal things escalate to an another level. It, it also shows that these like places where it's more poor in Iran doesn't get more as much reaction as things that happens in, I don't know, Tehran or something. Like, because that there's a lot of people dead. There's a lot of people dead being shot from up in the sky. Like this usually, if this was like, a different place in Iran, it probably would have gotten a much bigger reaction, which is sad that it's not that it's not right now. It's also because the vi the videos from it is just so gruesome. Like I'm even the oh, places yeah. that are covering it, I, they're not showing the videos, right? Like they they keep telling you like, oh yeah, we can't show any show you any of this. Um, so I saw footage of just Zahedan afterwards, and it looks like Syria. It looks yeah. like they turned the city into Syria. It's horrific. Just shells of cars and buildings. Like, it's crazy. Secular Proton yeah. is saying, WTF, I haven't heard of it yet. And I've been constantly monitoring Iran news still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is so interesting. Like, if it's, it's also it shows like a little bit how foreigners might be more motivated with, with the, I don't know, things that interest them rather than things that are costly Quant to human yeah. lives. Quantifiably you know I mean? worse, yeah. I don't know. I, I just like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. I, I think like a lot of our like our audience and our people are also like looking for an anti-Islam angle to this. But so if like a woman is, again, Masa Amini's death is a, tra is a tragedy and I'm glad that all the protests is happening to, to it, right? But if it was 150 men being shot down from the sky for something that was a protest that was about the economy, for example, it wouldn't have gotten the same attention, even though it was more people de dying, right? I'm just like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't want to complain about things because it's just how it is and, and there's nothing to do about it. I'm just I'm just observing it. But anyways, things right. are escalating in Iran. This is this was supposed to be the time where the protests in Iran um, have been died out. This was supposed to be that moment, okay? Because they were like bringing back the internet and then they shut down the internet again because the government itself are like, okay, everybody go home now. Nothing to see here. We're all over. The protest is over. And now they're escalating. So this is kind of a worrisome. And also, by the way, I, const I in the past couple of years, I am constantly in rooms, like audio rooms, clubhouse, and social media of Iranians. But guess which kind of Iranians, okay? I'm not listening to anti-regime Iranians, right? I am constantly listening to what pro-regime Iranians are saying right now, okay? And I cannot tell you how divided they are. I've never seen them so divided. They Ooh, are fighting. They, they are at each other's neck over this, right? And this is what you want to see, right? They are their values are clashing right now with each other, right? So it's one thing. Whenever protests like this happen in Iran, you have anti-regime people in their own rooms and in their own social media groups and stuff like versus the enemy, um, which is the other side, which is the pro-regime people. And they're like, they're, they're constantly throwing things at each other from across and they, they don't get along, right? But now in the clubs and the rooms and the 
uh, groups and the communities where the pro regime are when you go in there it's civil war right civil war like it's unbelievable i've never seen them so divided on this topic right and this is there are so many things that about these current protests in iran that are unprecedented then ted but this is the most key part right the the line a lot of lines have been crossed right especially the international attention line okay and the number of iranians outside of iran that are protesting and the kinds of people that are coming out in the streets and protesting in iran itself okay these are all red lines that have been crossed but i think this is the most important red line that has been crossed the red line that iranian re, pro-iranian regimes uh, are now anti other pro-iranian regime people on where they stand mm. on this issue right and because the, again, the only way for you to have any chance, any chance, I tell you, okay, to bring down this regime is to create that division between them, okay? Because the people, even if they're the majority, they have no power, okay? They have no gun power, right? They have their only way for this regime to come down is by force, okay? And by force means somebody needs to be armed, right? And that those arm the armed group could be be three options. It's either a foreign force like the U.S. or something, which that thing going to happen, right? Or if somehow the people get a hand, get like they get their hands on guns, okay? That is more likely, but still unlikely. It's, it's hard to do that, right? I mean, keep, you know, and hold on to it, right? The third option is the people that already have the guns <laughs> to turn it on each other eventually at some point instead of at the people, okay? That is what you want. That is the outcome that you want, and you will do that by making them feel like crap about themselves and where they stand over this issue and we are Which seeing this should. happen well, yeah but this is we didn't see this before we're now seeing guilt shame um skepticism over people coming and asking for forgiveness people signaling people high up there signaling that maybe they're standing with the people even in this article i don't know how this the the article that you guys wrote on the atheist republic website I don't know you don't understand the significance of this one clip because there's many clips and this one clip is also very significant i don't know if this explains it well so let's read it um ash oh ashtari iran's chief of police um at issues okay actually uh, in in an effort to boost security forces say um sagging oh yeah there, there you go sagging morale okay this is why this clip is very important because we were watching this officer this chief police officer telling the people that they that they are on the right side okay this leak is very important why would the chief police tell, tell his officers tells his our fellow police officers that don't worry they're standing on the right side why would susan you tell me why would he be telling them that because he knows the way which way the tides are turning and who he will be answerable to soon enough no no think about it these are police he's surrounded by police officers and he's telling them don't worry you're you're doing the right thing the only reason why he might be doing that is because he's oh, hearing that i didn't understand they, yeah yeah this leak this video shows that they th that there are many officers that are questioning whether they're doing the right thing he specifically let me actually let me play the audio Okay, so actually, I mean, Sagi Morale told them, Stand oh, here, here's the translation, okay? Stand strong. Don't doubt the path because they want to strike down the very state and, and say the path you've taken since the revolution was wrong, okay? Let me actually listen to the Persian version of this. Wait, there is no audio here. Why does this not have audio? Maybe you watch it on Twitter. Maybe you will have, yeah, audio, have audio either. Maybe because there's this is me. unmute site. That's why. There you go. He says, "Stand strong. Don't doubt your position even a little bit." Oh my God. He say, he says, "Don't doubt your position even a little bit." There is doubt within the pro regime people. Okay. There is no reason that you don't need this pep talk if there's something not happening. Okay. Yeah. Even... like the path that we're going right now today like he's telling them 
the the fact that you're attacking the protesters, like because they're feeling guilty, they're thinking like we're doing something wrong. They saw Masa Amini die, and they're looking at people and they're listening to their complaints. Some of them are thinking like these are legit complaints, and some <laughs> of them are. No. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. The police and the armed forces. Some of them are like, you know what? The the pro the chance may they have a point. They have a point, and also because now the economy is making their life like it's getting to them as well, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So, like their lives are miserable as well. So this is like he's saying the path that you're taking is the same path that the martyrs took, right? So he's mm. like, your path is the path of the martyrs. He's like, don't you you know you you feel like icky right now, but you know the martyrs that we all love that you guys celebrate. The, wait, this which martyrs? Like, the Iran Iraq War martyrs. Well, I mean, when they say martyrs, they're like all like the Iran Iraq all the way to Imam Hussein, like martyrs, okay, okay. Islamic martyrs. Okay, Shia is Shia martyrs. Okay, right. So. <laughs> Like what? What Qasem Soleimani? What Hajj Qasem? This is the the path that Qasem Soleimani was on. The, you are tonight. You are on that path. What the what? The reason why he has to tell them that is because they're like they might be qu- they're questioning again. Like don't. This is what Qasem Soleimani did as well because they love Qasem Soleimani. So like, oh, Yo, you guys, you're doing the same thing. You're doing the same thing. <laughs> So this is why he's saying they, these people they want to take down the regime. So he's like reminding them, like he actually this is very subtle. Okay, I'm gl- I'm glad I played this. Okay, because you hear they want to take out the regime. Why is he telling them that? Because they're hearing chants that make sense to them, but they're still pro regime. So he's reminding them it's not just about those chants. Okay, it's not about like justice or stuff like that. They want to take the, the regime that you love. They want to take it down. They're coming for like all that you love okay that's why you're when you when you're hitting them on the head with your batons or whatever or when you're shooting at them when that when that, when that makes you feel guilty because these are like it looks like your own sister or your own brother that you're hitting in the street and they look innocent to, to not feel guilty remember that these people want to take down the regime mm-hmm. that's what you have to remember to make yourself motivated to attack the people that's what he's saying basically so yeah this is the translation of what he's saying like both in english but also like interpretation like they, they want to take away our martyrs what? yeah he said like basically when he says the when he says they want to take away our martyrs it means the what the, our martyrs fought for like that's what ah, means, the values okay. right? like what does that even he's mean like, <laughs> he says he wants to t- they want to take away the path of the revolution, right? So the Islamic mm-hmm. revolution, the path that it has come so far, they want to ruin that. So he's reminding them, why are they fighting the people? <laughs> like the, the path that is filled with light, a, perf- a beautiful uh, path that we have taken. They want to destroy that. <laughs> I have worn this, uh, uh, out this, what is it called? Uh, uniform. uniform? to to protect this path oh boy yeah that's actually a very telling important choice of words you wear the uniform to protect the status of the revolution not the people not the citizenry whose taxes go into paying for your freaking salary okay um Somebody say, oh, when I, she was like, Gita vibes. Yes, this is the Gita vibes. Yes, fight, fight. You're supposed to fight. Follow the Dharma. Follow the Islamic Dharma. Do your, follow your role. That yeah, exactly. That is giving me, you're right. That is giving me Gita vibes. It's not just Islam, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Charles is saying, the police are like, are we the baddies? <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my god, I should have had the meme ready. Oh god. We need to have this meme ready at all times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um yeah. I think this is really important to talk about because I mean, maybe we should have a different news segment dedicated to this next week, but I've been sharing with Armin a lot. Yes, are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to Photoshop the special forces uniform onto this. No, the Iranian people should put this on a like a sign and just hold it on the streets. <laughs> Mind me, that was but yeah. Um. So, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, but there is le- this is a very important discussion because there has been 
legitimate fear of mutiny within the ranks. And yes. I think we should have a segment where we dive deeper into that in more detail. And also the completely unprecedented news of seminarians house yes. students coming forward and declaring Khamenei an illegitimate mushtahed which yeah you said that to me where is it crazy absolutely crazy but i mean like there's i don't know if i feel like yeah. that kind of deserves its own segment what do you think yeah here this blew my mind can you give us a quick summary? I just I, I will just give you the translation of the title. Okay, this is by mm -hmm. Iran Wire, which is okay, which is a legitimate news source, right? So I it love says Iran Wire. Jamia as Tolaba Madarasino Jose Khamenei as Velayat Monazelas. Okay, I think it means like he has. Is that how you say it? Um, it means like he does. He's not. He doesn't have the legitimacy to be the supreme leader. So these a lot of mullahs from Qom, which is the the city that is kind of like Iran's Vatican. Okay, so mm -hmm. Qom is like Iran's Vatican. It's where like, Tehran is the capital. Qom is like Iran's Vatican. It's like the religious authority the, where all the mullahs uh, go te the, teach and learn and they get their their designations and licenses to be mullahs. Okay, it's a it's a mullah making factory. The home city is a mullah making factory. Okay, that's, that's where you go to become a mullah in Iran, and that's where like the religious rulings and everyone uh, everyone comes after it. Right. So a lot of mullahs in Rome are now openly openly saying that Khamenei is not fit to be supreme leader. This is unprecedented, and they're getting no reaction. Okay. Also. A lot of times, a lot of protests are not being like the a lot of uh, are not being met with um, like you can see people saying death to harmony in front of police officers and they're not doing anything. They're back. Oh my God. They're, there are examples of them attacking, but there are examples of there's so many videos coming out that they're backing down and they're not attacking. So there's a mixed thing. But the fact that there are some areas where they're not attacking seems to be there's some coming there's some disagreement okay some places where they're like really attacking and some places they're not attacking at all it seems like whoever is the commander of there is like following the orders and the commander of that section is not following the orders there seems to be like a major division okay also most importantly what do you think i'm just gonna say the most importantly Khamenei has not oh, been has seen anything or heard of for more than two weeks Okay, historically, when a protest like this happen, much smaller protests like this that have happened, Khamenei comes and speaks out, okay, between an average of two or three days, between two or three days after the protest. He comes out and he analyzes this and he condemns it and he calls them a whole bunch of Zionists and Western <laughs> imperialists or some MEK members or some... Uh, um, Secessionist or something like that, right? So it's like yeah. seditionist, yeah, something like that. or like influenced by like I don't know evil powers around the world. These are not their people. These are just a fringe group. He comes and makes an announcement like that, and he just tries to reassure his followers that why they have the moral high ground, right? So he says something like that, right, to boost them. This is the first time that these are these protests are we have never seen anything like this before in Iran. Okay, first time in the history of Iran since the uh, 1979 revolution, right? So if all of those other protests um, justify him coming out and saying something, this would have been it, right? And he is nowhere, nowhere. I don't know why, okay? I don't know. A lot of people are saying he's dead. A I don't know if he's dead. people think he's already dead. Yes. So I don't know if he's dead, but he's Holy acting cow. like he's dead. <laughs> but he's, dude, like if... If he's dead, I, first of all, missing in dead. action. We have yeah. an Ayatollah missing in action. <laughs> yes, Ayatollah, the main, the main Ayatollah, the main yeah. Ayatollah missing in action. So this, first of all, if he's not dead, wow. And if he's dead, wow. Okay, because if he's not dead, if he's not dead, how come a man who's not dead has, who always comes and takes a strong stance against protests like this? That would be like that would be more questions. Like we're like, okay, why then? Why is he afraid of? What is it so different about this protest that he's not coming out and saying something? Right? One. 
Okay. And if he's dead, holy crap. If he's dead, eventually the announcements of his death will eventually come out. Right. And this is the worst time for him to die. <laughs> <laughs> right like at the for the for the regime at the peak like at the same time that master amini died and like ignited the greatest protesters that we have seen in iran for a while right if he dies in the middle of all this it's like the people are already in the street because we kind of knew that when when Khamenei dies that would ignite protests and division everywhere but I'm we've actually, already like, get... stressed out about it like i'm stressed yeah. out about like the blood that will run in the streets yeah Okay, well, yeah, but we'll we'll get there. Okay, well, as maybe next week we'll talk about that, right? But we were hoping that the regime could fall when Khamenei dies because that would create a lot of division between the hardliners, right? Mm -hmm. But even without that announcement, we're seeing a lot of division right now. So this would be adding on top of each other at the worst moment for the regime. Like it seems like the the you know gods that our own exists have come together to make it the perfect storm for the regime protests and Khamenei's absence okay and also what analysts are saying is that if these protests don't topple the regime the next few ones will <laughs> you know like it's it, it has shaken the system to such a degree that it's basically a house of cards right now right so and everybody is seeing how how fragile the whole thing is, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like you may it's a major push to throw it off the cliff, and if it doesn't work, people kind of know like they just need to go for a couple more, and it will just fall fall down, unless something major happens. Like unless like for example, the the IRGC or the Atesh comes in and declares I don't know martial law or something. You know what I mean? We don't know, right? But we also here's another important point we also assumed that the regime has so much more to to come down on people okay so we thought that every time the protests happen eventually the regime will come and will attack the people until everybody goes home right and the the, the, the way they did it they're like oh we we're just using like five percent or ten percent of our of our like this is not this is not my final form basically the regime was always saying like you know how we like sent you home and we came and attacked you and killed you that was just like five percent of what we could have done right mm -hmm. i mean we have defeated isis in so many places and we have like so many like look we're selling drones to russia like we this is like this is nothing we can do so much more we could like we could like do genocide if we wanted to right but basically but we're, we're just going easy on you right but and that's what a lot of people assumed Right. People are like, OK, like if the protest ever goes to the next level, they could like crush us. But now what they're observing is that they're bringing children. They're bringing children to let me actually show you. Actually, I have the picture. For yeah, that. no. And this has been fact checked as legitimate. Yeah, they're legit I mean, I bringing yeah. kids, putting them in a few like helmets with shields, giving them billy clubs and sending them out onto the streets to be besieged patrol. Look at this. This is they're using these kids to attack the people. Look at these babies. Like they must be desperate. They must be running out of manpower. What the hell is this? It's this actually is a child. so sad. The, the, these are the forces that are now attacking the people. Okay? So when people see this plus their attempt to bring like Lebanese and Iraqis to attack the people like wait a minute we thought you have a lot more resources the fact that you're this is what you're bringing to the streets makes us think like maybe like you don't have much more left like if if this is the most you can do if we push a little bit more then you're gonna run out of especially because they're tired like they seem like the 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 pro regime forces they seem to be demotivated and also tired the people are frustrating them like they they keep going one place and then all of a sudden another place people are protesting and they don't have enough to you know it's just like um it's, it's bad it looks bad right so and people are noticing the weakness and when people can smell your weakness then they're gonna go for your neck yeah. true go for the jugular oh my gosh yeah um one thing that i think is also really important to talk about um I, um, in the show notes for this segment, I put a bunch of stuff that we can, um, show. Um, so 
last week, no, no, yesterday, excuse me. Yesterday, there was a global rally in support of the protests in Iran. So there were rallies in over 150 cities across the world. I went to one yesterday. It was awesome. Um, and um, so thank you to everyone who attended. I think it's so important to show our support. And these this global rally is truly historic. Like we have never seen the Iranian diaspora and people who ally and support them show up and show out in the way we have yesterday. Like thousands of people in London, uh, thousands of people across Europe. There were, I reportedly, like 10,000 people in Los Angeles. There were between 50 to 60,000 people that marched in Oh, Toronto. <laughs> this Armin is Anna pulled... the protest. Yeah, yeah, Armin pulled up the photo of me at the protest yesterday. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I was standing on this lamppost and then someone gave me this flag. And I literally, people afterwards were like, how did you like hang on that pole and wave that flag for two hours straight? And I'm like, I was doing that for two hours? Yeah, so I was chilling. <laughs> In this, uh, yeah, I was I was hanging on to this flagpole, so that, waving that flag this, high for two hours yesterday, despite so the people, fact that my endometriosis was kicking my ass, which shows my determination. I was not going to miss this, okay? No matter how much pain I was in, I was hanging on to that pole and waving that flag high, okay? <laughs> so this is, um, for people who don't know, this is Iran's uh, flag before the Islamic Revolution. Yeah. So that's what the people it's the main flag people hold uh anti-regime people hold when they want to support well, especially this is the one that people use if they're more of a secular republican versus the monarchists use one that has the same lion in the middle except there's a gold wreath around the bottom and the crown on top so that's usually like uh, a monarchist flag this is more oh, this one doesn't flag. have a crown oh yeah you're exactly. right there's no gold mm. wreath there's no crown so this is like a republican flag not not a monarchist flag which is why i was like okay <laughs> holding that um but um <laughs> charles is saying susanna were you pole dancing for hours in support of iran <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to put it um but armin can you go to the stuff i wanted to um show for this segment yes. in the show notes please yes yes so there's a yeah. lot. I'm going to have, so I didn't click Shaking on all of them. The scene. I was very confused about the flag. I didn't know why people were using different Iranian flags. Yeah. So a lot of people refuse to use the oh, current God. country's flag. Oh yeah. So don't um, share audio for this one. Cause there's music. Okay. There we go. Um, and so they, they prefer to use the pre-Islamic revolution flag. So I wanted to show this because in terms of these global protests, we, need to really give a lot of thanks and praise and recognition to Hamid um, Ismailian. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And <coughs> this is him as he looks upon a crowd of like 50,000 people marching in Toronto. Like, look at this for Iran. And I have so much respect for him because if you don't know, he is one of the surviving family members of the PS752 tragedy, which is when after the assassination assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian forces struck down a civilian airplane and killed like close to 200 people that were just innocent civilians traveling between Iran and Ukraine. And this man lost his wife, Parisa, and his 10-year-old daughter, Rira. And I think about him a lot. And I think about how this man shouldn't be an activist, actually. You know, Armin, like, we are two people, like, we chose to do this, right? But he had his wife and his daughter taken from him in this horrible tragedy. 
And everything he's done every second for the past two years has been put towards getting justice for the people whose family members were killed by the regime. The, this plane that was shot down for no reason. Some people actually think it was on purpose. And... I don't know. I I think he's an incredible person. I mean, he still wears his wedding ring after all the, you know, after like two years now. And I, there's nothing I want more in this world than a partner and a little girl to call my own. And to think of something like that happening to me. <laughs> Having my world taken from me like that. I don't know how I would make it through that hell. And I don't know how I would continue to do anything, let alone become the spokesperson for these families that are trying to piece their lives back together. And, you know, he is such an incredible person. People call him sometimes, they call him the father of Iran. They say they should change Father's Day to be Hamed's birthday. They call him Kaveh the justice seeker. And I saw this incredible Nick photo of him marching down the street with a bullhorn strapped to his chest and he's carrying a sign on his shoulder. But people photoshopped it to be him walking down the street yelling into this bullhorn with Instead, it's the country of Iran on his shoulder. Because he doesn't just fight for his daughter and his wife that were taken from him. He organized a, this global historic protest. And look at him as he sees 50,000 people come and show their support. I don't... I don't know. I think I think about him a lot. Let me actually show you something about him. Oh, by the way, they call him the father of a nation because he lost his daughter, so he's not a father anymore. So they like they want him, they want him to still be a father. They say like you're all our fathers now, right? But oh. So the, here's a picture of him actually with his daughter. I don't know if you see it. It's a little bit small, right? Because there was this song, this man uh, wrote a song. There was a, there was a, a, on Twitter, there was a call out for people to send out their tweets for why they're protesting, right? And people were like, for this, for that. So there was a lot of tweets. And this man, right, uh, Shervin, who is now in jail, this boy is now in jail for this song. So he took all of the tweets of people who are saying like a lot of tweets of different people who said, I'm, I'm protesting for this. For, for this, for this, for this, right? And he made a song called Baraya, which, is, which means four, right? And this song has now become this revolution's theme song. Everybody, everywhere in the protests are is playing this. It's such a beautiful song. I, I, I wish you could, you guys could understand what you say, right? But he keeps on reading the tweets, but changing it a little bit to fit with the song. I don't know. If, so this is... So you can see he keeps reading for, and then he says for what, right? And then he oh, gets to this. I mean, it's this... muted for us. We can't hear it. Oh, oh let me play this. Uh, one second. Let me. So for example, this suite, it says for the dog, for the illegal dogs um, who get killed all the time. by the... Because in Iran, dogs are illegal. In a... To have dogs, to have... In a... it says anti... having dogs is anti-Islamic, right? So the regime kills them, right? The regime t takes dogs and they and they massacre them, right? Hold on, let me change that. Um, yeah. But so this this tweet is saying for the for all the innocent illegal so-called illegal dogs, right? So this song is saying for all the uh, all the 
on endless cries, tears that we have. But this is the one that I wanted to show you. So this one, this tweet says, was by him, right? By Hamid himself, the guy, the, the man that uh, Susanna was just talking about. So he he tweeted for the for the desire, for the sadness, for the aching heart uh, of wanting to see this moment again, right? And it's a picture of him reading the newspaper next to his daughter. And this is the this is the girl, the daughter who was on that plane. Um, who the Islamic regime shot down with two missiles. So that was his tweet. So he's protesting because he aches just to have this moment seen once again. Anyways, but guys, I, and let me know if you guys want me to go through, I, do a stream or something and go through the song uh, line by line with you because the tweets here that he highlights is so beautiful. And I, when I was listening to this, I thought uh, he must be in the U.S. or like Canada or Europe somewhere. I didn't know he was making the song from Iran. And they arrested him. Like, I don't understand who could come and arrest us. But he, he didn't do anything. He just made a song of people's... His crime just, is that his song got 40 million views in 48 hours. Yeah, that was his crime. He's arrested. He's in jail right now because his song was popular among the protesters. Anyways... Oh, this tweet is so beautiful. The tweet, oh my, every tweet is beautiful. But look at this one. So this tweet is saying, I'm for, so they're all protesting for something. He's saying for the day that we could put our real pictures on our profile pictures. Mm -hmm. with with smiles with sm like smiling pictures on our profile pictures right because the reason why she can't put any pictures on her profile is because she don't want she don't want to give away her identity right so the, so one day they're all free to say whatever they want and they could come online and with their real identities so he the song says for pictures of smiling faces but the tweet says for the day that i could put a real picture of myself on my profile picture smiling God, these tweets are amazing, and this song is amazing. I wish. Let me know, guys, if you want me to go over it, like maybe uh, somewhere on line by line. Yeah. <laughs> Babak did mm -hmm. a um, a translation of it into English and German, I so know. you could use that as a reference. I know, I know, but it's not just translation; it's the explanation. I yeah. need to put it in context. I need to tell you the backstory of each tweet. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, guys. I know the lyrics are available, all, um, but. I just want to like go and discuss each one of them, like give some context, talk about the history of it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if if you if you guys um, the, the, there's in the under the video itself. If you go for, uh, look for it, there's translations there as well, right? So you, usually in the comments, somebody will come. Yeah, there you go. The first comment is the translation. I don't. I di I disagree with some of these, but yeah. Okay. Did you want to show something else? Yeah, I thought um, I have a couple of other things. Oh, some people say they want to listen to it in the in the live chat. I will put I will put the link to it for you in the live chat if anybody wants to go listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe they arrested him. Like the people that like issued his arrest and the people that went and arrested him. They, like what they do? They have hearts of stone. Like how could they? How could such people exist? Like, I don't understand. This is like unbelievable. These are people that are talking about their hopes and their dreams. And he took them all together and turned it into a beautiful song. And somebody somewhere thought that this is arrest worthy. Somebody somewhere thought that this is arrest worthy. How could this like, how could such a people, I don't understand. I, I'm beyond worse. Anyways, I'll go to the next thing that you wanted to highlight. Sorry. Yeah, so I thought this was important to share. So this is just a small snapshot of people who have been killed while protesting for Masa so far. Um, just some of the names and ages and photos that we know, some of them that we're aware of. Um, and what's so heartbreaking is like so many of them are underage. There are so many kids that are just like 
14 to 17 years old that have been killed. And I think I've actually been reading some analysis on this. And there are analysts who think that the reason why this generation is like we are not to be effed with is essentially because they were born after kind of the collective trauma of the revolution. So the people who experienced the revolution and then the 1980s that came after it and the Iran Iraq Iran-Iraq war and the pain and suffering and turmoil that came with it, basically were like, we experienced firsthand what that means. And although what we're dealing with is awful, like we can't go through that again, essentially. But analysts are saying like this generation never had to experience any of that. So they are willing to put themselves through it essentially. What do you think of that? Yeah. Um, like what I heard is that the, this new generation has nothing to look forward to like, and they have no, there's no, the ideology that the regime tried so hard to build. They have, they, the, the state media literally said that they have, they consider nothing holy. And they were saying it as if it was a negative thing, right? And I was like, damn, yeah, right, <laughs> right? Like they have no, they, that's what they say. Like they don't consider any, oh, that's actually a better translation. It seems like this generation doesn't consider anything sacred. And they were saying that, complaining about them, right? And I was like, that was the best compliment that you could have made to, to for mm-hmm. me. That was the best compliment you could have. Like, there's nothing sacred for them. Like, because it means like we try so hard to have Islamic revolutionary ideals demonstrated to them to, for them to accept as something sacred, something holy, something that you don't attack, something that you value, something that you protect. And they were they acting so desperate. Like, why did what's wrong? How did we lost this generation? Right. And they themselves, again, they say it's because of social media. Like we're trying to get them through our school and our mosques and our TV, but they're on their phone most of the time. And there's it's hard to compete with that. That's what they're saying. And I'm like, yeah, again, they're right. We like they have through social media, they have seen the possibilities. They have seen what freedom looks like. They have seen what better lifestyles, what you know, what's more stable lifestyles, more, more safer, more, you know, secure, more loving, you know, without, without having, love, having somebody looking over your shoulder, having somebody telling you what to do, what's Islamic, what's not Islamic, how to live your life, constantly controlling you, monitoring, you have seen those, like, and it's, it doesn't matter how much programming you try to do they have seen the alternative and there's no going back and there's no way to go back when you when they see that when they see what's possible you know th- you can't make them unsee that you have more things that you want me to show here yeah um i think you can skip the third one and go to the fourth one please the tweet this one yeah so oh, this is something also important to highlight so this is a clip that went viral And um, this is a girl who is cutting off her hair on top of her brother's grave. I I think in the caption it says how old he was, but he was quite a young man. And I don't know. I think it's important to see these things. So I, I, for people who don't know why all these women are cutting their hair in a traditional uh, pre-Islamic and even after like traditional Iranian, like not Islamic, but Iranian um, culture, cutting your hair is a sign of um, snugwari. How do I translate that? Grief. Um, grief. Yes. You women show their grief by cutting their hair. And ch- oh, one reason why that was a traditional sign of grief is because they were going to battle, because they were ready to stop doing womanly things 
and go to this is a sign of I'm ready to go to war to get revenge for the my my man or being killed, right? So they would stop being doing womanly things and they would cut their hair and they go to to war. So it's not just grief; it's also preparing for the next phase of what they're about to do, right? So this is like in Iranian folklore or like traditional myth and stuff. Um, it has a specific name as well when you cut your hair. Uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting because it's very on Islamic as well. Like this is not Islamic standards. This is very Iranian standards, right? I mean, you don't even show your hair, let alone cut your hair. This is like, but you have another picture of somebody that looks really much like she's ready to go to war. Do you want me to show it? Yeah. Way? And a lot of people have taken it also to be like, in terms of the compulsory hijab, it's like, if you are going to kill me for the sake of yeah. showing my hair, like I will cut off my hair. I will make myself bald. Like if you would rather kill me for its visibility, you know mm. what I mean? Oh, it's interesting. People in the live chat are saying in Hinduism, they have that too. I didn't know that P people are saying in Hinduism, in India, men shave their head when family member dies, uh, mostly North India, Hindu women shave their head fully when someone dies. Wow. I didn't know that. This is not just Iranian culture. Interesting. Okay. But look at this. this look people at this have picture. been cutting their hair in solidarity with Masa like all around the world. Yes. Look at this. Look at the look in her eyes. Yeah, her mother was killed for protesting. God. This is... Her mom was killed for fighting for her. The commentary on this by a lot of people are saying like th this is what the Iranian regime is answerable to. And they're saying a lot of people are interpreting the look like this is like this is the look that the regime needs to be afraid of. These are the faces of people who are not going to take it anymore. Oh, yeah, she looks like she's ready for battle. No. Yeah, exactly. Darko is saying it's a look of determination. It's a look like I have nothing else to lose. You have taken the dearest thing away from me. So what else can you take away from me? It's also a look that says I'm coming for you, honestly. Like if I yeah. like these yeah. She looks like Joan of Arc. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is there anything else you want me to show? Oh, there's this there's this. I don't know, is there? Yeah, there's this. Oh yeah, so the murder of the protester Hadith <clears throat> is really important because um, she went viral for this video of her without hijab tying her hair back behind her head in a bun, you know, like this declaration of fierceness of getting ready for war before walking into this protest. And she died because she was shot six times in the face. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is going to happen? I don't 
don't know, but I know that there's going to be a lot more loss. Yeah. A lot more tears from people that deserve so much better. Okay, Adam is asking, is this struggle going to intensif intensify or will it be squashed? All right, so Adam, that's the question everybody's asking. Everybody's asking that. Um, and nobody really has an answer. The thing that what seem it seems like even if it dies down, a new normal has been set for people and their demand for change. Every time, every time a protest, so every protest that has died down, the protest next, the next protest that comes after in Iran has had two features. One, it has been, it has crossed more red lines than never was never imagined even the, in the protest before it. Two, it happened with a shorter distance than the protest before it, right? And it just seemed like every protest is an escalation compared to the one that happened before. And if this trend continues, even if these protests die down, the next protest and the one after it is going to be, one of these protests eventually is going to be a tipping point. The way a lot of analysts talk about it is that the regime, for the regime to stay in power, they have to win every single one of these battles, right? Every single one of them. But for the people to win and for the regime to fa fall, the people have to win only one of these battles. And then if Khamenei dies and the regime is becomes more divided and more people seem to be joining the people, more pro-regime people seem to be switching sides every time a new protest happens, at some point people will think that we have been past, we have passed the tipping point. And the regime will be at the verge of collapse. Again, I'm not saying that will happen or not because... I'm not going to act like so many people who know what's going to happen in the future. I'm just telling you what the analysis of so many people are. They might be right. They might be wrong. People are telling you, people are upset about you crying. They want to make you feel better in blind chat. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, yeah. I've been crying a lot in the past two weeks. Uh, Sorgu is saying too much blood has been spilled for it to be squashed. I was actually reading um, a really interesting interview with uh, Nasrin Sotodeh, who, for those who don't know, she's almost like Iran's Nelson Mandela. She's like a lawyer who's been imprisoned for a really long time simply because she's a lawyer for women who are protest the compulsory hijab and she was speaking to this reporter basically about how and the way she put it was so good she said the hijab taboo has been broken the taboo has been broken it can they cannot put this back in the box they cannot put this back in the box anymore P women are just going to go eat in a cafe without hijab, like woman in any normal, you know, other country. Women are just walking down the street without hijab now. Like they, they mm -hmm. cannot, they cannot just go back to normal. They cannot go back to regularly scheduled programming. Things have shifted fundamentally and they're going to have to adjust accordingly. Hmm. But for, for people who might not know, it's not about the hijab. For the hijab to go, it means the regime is out, the, like it has, it's on life support. This is why so many people don't understand. Why is the regime so adamant to keep the hijab, mandatory hijab rules off? It seems like if they just let go of that, a lot of the 
like why don't you for your own survival just let go of that but the protests are not about the hijab a lot of people a lot of the anti-regime a lot of the people protesters and many of the other activists say that hijab hijab bahunas asl nizam nishunas which means that the hijab is an excuse the foundations of the regime is our target right mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. regime knows see the this regime is has three pillars right anti-us anti-israel hijab okay <laughs> so and the hijab is the weakest pillar right if you take uh, that away from them the whole thing will come crumble down because it's the most visible one right people with hijab in iran is a sign that the regime is in power it's kind of like the reason why in a battle the person that is holding the flag for your army you try to take that down because if that flag falls it kind of shows that they're they're falling that the you know people the morale everything like is, is they're basically going on retreat so for you to take out the hijab is the banner of the re other side falling and that would basically means that it, it, the regime is weak the regime is either going to be forced it's not it's not either if the regime removes the hijab it's a signal it's a sign that the people have won and they have been forced to remove the hijab that means they're weak that means that they have they can't suppress the people that means they have shown their belly to the enemy and the enemy when you have your neck on their when you have your boot on their neck and they're like tapping out it, you don't let go you double down and you that's finished that's why you finish the job that's why the regime is not willing to let go of their job also because their own people there's their own people will turn on them see this is why it's so difficult for them there's two pro-regime groups right some of them are against them now but saying that they're telling them look guys these people we we can keep islam let we can we don't have to force people islam right we can't force people into heaven we can't force people into heaven let them not wear the hijab we'll like market the hijab to them or something we'll teach them why hijab is a good thing for the sake of the regime standing remove the hijab and the other side the other half is saying what the hell are you talking about this entire revolution was about islamic law like what do we give all these martyrs for if it wasn't for this so that's why they're fighting each other and they're losing the half that is like guys let's make hijab voluntarily they're they're losing that slowly but if they remove the hijab the other half the other half that is pro-regime that says that we did the revolution for such ideals for such standards they would lose that half and that's even the more important half that's the mm -hmm. half that is ready to give blood for to give their lives and their children for this regime so the regime no, knows that if it gets rid of the hijab it would lose the most important half the half that is willing to give sacrifice everything for keeping up the government that is supposed to make the world ready for the coming of mahdi and if you use that you have nobody and but don't worry guys there's nothing islamic about these protests there's nothing it's <laughs> not against islam we should have a whole discussion on that because i have been losing my mind over the rhetoric about how this ha does not have to do with islam i've been straight up yeah. losing my mind feminist oh, pages talking about how this has nothing to do with islam i'm like oh okay. but the state is just created for the guardianship of the for the methi to come back but don't worry guys it's not islamic oh, let me paint on my clown makeup <laughs> okay to be clear it has everything to do with islam but it's also sometimes by many people not anti-islamic right yes so it has to do with islam but the protests a lot of the protesters a lot of them are anti-islamic very passionately so okay but we have muslims in the protesters as well we have many many muslim protesters as well um but even the muslim protesters protesting and they're like look i choose islam for myself i don't want to force islam on, upon our people that still makes it about islam still it is still even makes it about so you can't act like this has oh this has nothing how could something about hijab not have anything to do with islam right so you can't generalize the protesters. So for people saying like, are the protesters anti-Islamic? And some people are like, no, look, we have Muslim protesters. We have many Muslim protesters, right? So no, these people are not anti-Islamic. 
That's not true. There are many protesters who are anti-Islamic. And if somebody says like, oh, these, pro these are protests against Islam, that's not true because we do have many Muslim protesters who are Muslims. So we're a mix. It's a mix of anti-Islamic and Muslim protesters and some people in between. I just get really charged up about that because I've seen photos of our members, our Atheist Republic members, bloodied and beaten for these protests. Our community, my community, bruised and battered, saying, I gave blood to fight Islam. I gave blood to fight this religion and what it's done to me and my country and my friends. You know, people that are part of what, you know, like Armin spent more than 10 years building are crystal clear about what they're fighting and why they're fighting and what they're doing it for. So that I have people come and say, oh, no, this isn't Islamic, blah, blah, blah. Because, again, they're constantly catering to a Western audience, navel-gazing. It disgusts me. It makes me really angry. I want to highlight this comment. Um, Sorgu is saying, I guess we should welcome the Muslims as allies for now. Honestly, not just for now. The, our problem is not with Muslims. Our, I mean, our problem is with Islam, okay? So we just disagree with Muslims, right? You could ally with Muslims forever. It's not just for now, okay? Like, is the, pro, the Muslims, okay, who are not forcing Islam on the rest of us, okay, we don't have... We have disagreements with them. We don't have issues with them. And we could f have those disagreements and we could talk to them about it, right? Even after the revolution, if if, they're, if the regime falls, this is what some anti-Islamic activists don't understand, okay, in Iran, right? The, some of them act like once this regime falls, they're going to wash away Islam from, from Iran. That's not going to happen. There, Iran has many Muslims, many Muslims. You have to share this country with them. You have to... If this regime falls, the Iranian Muslims, you have to build a country with them. You have to learn how to tell them why they, you think their Islam is barbaric and wrong and evil or whatever, while being their friends and neighbors. And they could also tell you why your atheism or your anti-Islam stance is evil or barbaric while being friends and allies with you. You have to learn that. Okay? So... If you ally with Muslims in making this revolution happen, that's not the end of it. Because after that, the building of a country is even harder. Like toppling a regime, as hard as this looks, is less difficult than building a country. And you're not yes, the Taliban. To... <laughs> you're, not... you know, that's going to be a lot more difficult. Yeah. No, yeah, that's going to be a lot more difficult, and you're not going to be able to do that by alienating one third of the country. You have to welcome them as fellow Iranian citizens. Even if I welcome being anti-Islam, welcome that. Aggressively so, okay? But don't let that translate into being anti-Muslim. We share the world with Muslims, a lot of them, okay? We have to work with them. Anyways. Um, should we go to the next news? Yes, this next news is in a very different vein. Wait, the last thing I want to say is that people can get involved and support the people of Iran by sharing what's happening on social media. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your community about it in your local languages. You know, we want this to get, we want this to be expanded to just outside the Persian speaking community, just outside the English speaking community, like in, in your native language, talk to people about this. Stay up to date on what's happening. Like I said, there was just a massacre of at least 56 people in Baluchistan that like people aren't talking about. Um, and also check to see if there are um, rallies or protests happening in your city where you are. Um, 
A very easy way is that I usually look for a local Iranian community organization in my city, or maybe sometimes you can even just look in like cultural sites, like maybe a restaurant might have posted, hey, we're helping out this protest, blah, blah, blah. And literally just showing up to this protest and just standing there, even if you don't know the chance, even if you don't have a sign, is so encouraging to people. Like I cannot tell you how much appreciation is shown to me by the community simply because I show up and I show my support for them. It means so much to see non-Iranian people speaking up and just talking about what they're going through. Like I cannot emphasize enough how important that is. So if you if you feel powerless, that's something you can do to help. Perfect, perfect recommendation. Thank you, Susie. And Susie, thank you so much for your passion and attention to all of this. Like, I wish more non-Iranians were doing this. Like, I mean, the world, I think like the world pays a lot of attention to issues, Western issues, like European issues, North American issues. And I feel like they don't return the favor, right? Mm -hmm. To the rest of the world. They don't return the favor to India. They don't return the favor to Pakistan. They don't return the favor to Egypt, Indonesia, you know, all of Africa um iran so you know it's appreciated when when something like this happens so thank you oh reish just became a member thank you reish. oh thank you for becoming Re a member Re 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 welcome Re to satan's minions <laughs> ryan ryan shit ryan shit. sorry sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name okay um oh um do you have any recommendations some triash is saying some internet running communities i can visit to boost morale internet okay communities i'm not sure i mean i just follow like a ton of people on instagram i don't know yeah you know what just look at um here's my recommendation okay go on twitter and look for maso amini um hashtag and on the main post just on the comment of those main posts, just write your support. Right? So that would be the best thing you could do. Same thing on if Instagram want, too. Instagram too as well. Yeah. Just anywhere, any anywhere where you're seeing popular viral videos or posts by regarding the protests in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Those would be And say where you're to. from, because to show that it's all around the world means a lot. Oh, Barra is saying here. Here's to those in the West who actually uh, <laughs> Shiva get <laughs> Shiva get. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> That's very, very, very YouTube. Thank you. I appreciate keeping it YouTube friendly. <laughs> That's very clever. Thank you. <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.